in that scenario, I decided, hey, why don't I, uh, why don't I go USA versus Russia? I loaded all the US ICBM fields, uh, and I loaded all of Russia's ICBM fields, and I think I had about 3,000 missiles in the air, and then my computer just decided, you know what? I can't do all the physics that's required with this. <laughs> I'm going to move oh, one shit. second every 10 seconds, and so then I just exit. Wow, really? With, with, the, with your rig? I overloaded my CPU. Yeah, but the computer you have is no slouch. I don't have that modern of a rig. The, I don't think it's surprising. I mean, it, I have a 1080 for graphics, but that doesn't have... I mean, this is game is much more RAM and CPU heavy than it is graphics heavy. What, what CPU do you have? Uh, 4790. So it was very, okay. very high in well, like three that's... or four years ago. It's definitely not a thread ripper. By the way, I think that it's completely normal for launching 3,000... I mean, even like a thousand nukes. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm not even sure if you should ever launch more than, let's just say, 500 nukes <laughs> without killing your computer. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, I, uh, Dimitri, the the head guy of Warpersons, was actually watching the uh, watching the stream, and he basically told me what what was happening. I, I forget all the details, but he was kind of like, "This is why it's freezing." Basically, is essentially there were there were too many because again, this is a full global physics engine, basically. So. It's it's trying to do all of these ballistic calculations for literally thousands of missiles while they're moving at speed. All of the radar sensors and aircraft that were going on in the other part of the theater, because I still had probably 30 or 40 Russian assets in the middle of a battle um, while this was all going on. Um, you know, there's just it was trying to do too many things. But one of the things that they did do, apparently, with command is they did also provide a lot better... Uh, multi-core support, which Command Modern Air Naval Operations wasn't optimized very well for that. Apparently, that was there was there oh. were some big enhancements in the engine for that. Hmm. I'm not at all surprised, wow. basically, because I I think that the game is probably not meant to run with uh, that many things. Well, no, um, I don't I don't know what Dimitri said, but I, I don't think that there's. I don't think the game is going to have an easy time modeling 500 warheads. <laughs> it's not it's not an ICBM simulator. It's it's more meant to simulate. Missiles and aircraft that are engaged in a theater in a combat scenario. So you know the all of the details that you need to accurately model a dogfight. All of that complex calculation that has to go on for those aircraft. When when all of a sudden you you pile on three thousand additional calculations like that, you're going to overload your CPU, and that's perfectly fine. It, the game's not yeah. designed to, to definitely do that. not. If you play any of the scenarios, any any of the scenarios, if you play them normally, if I don't think you'll encounter this issue. Now, did it crash your computer? Did you get, like, blue skin of death? No, nothing like that. It just kind of slowed down. Demetrius was even like, now try and scroll around on the map. And I scrolled around on the map, and it was silky smooth butter. It was just the... No the, way, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow, they, I was about to say, I'm surprised your computer didn't crash, because most games probably wouldn't build in, like, resource management well enough. But I think they've done a very good job with this, then. It kind of speaks to it. Yeah, I mean, he was very proud. He was basically like, if you scroll around yeah, the map, it's cool. still very smooth. <laughs> it's just the calculations for the units that are slowing down. So there's obviously some that's sort of prioritization. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. They've done that means they've done good programming. So you mentioned something about there's literally hundreds, if not thousands, of scenarios. So is there a scenario editor attached to this game? I know there's a quick battle generator. Yeah, and it's very good. It, it's pretty simple to use. I used it. I haven't used it in Command, but I used it in Simano. And it was very easy to do. You just grab the units, you put them in the map, and you could start your scenario. <laughs> oh, wow. You can probably do a lot of more scripting, which I didn't do. I didn't get into actually telling units to make patrols and stuff, which you can do. But um, but if you just wanted to, like, put... What I wanted to do is I wanted to put two submarines in the ocean, have them fight each other, and I was able to do that. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my nuclear example was literally me jumping into the editor, pulling the scenario down, and playing it through while in the editor. So yes, there is a full scenario editor that everybody has access to. It's right there on the main menu of the game, actually. Um, and it's it's pretty damn intuitive for, for this kind of thing. You can you can go really simple, like what Tortuga talked about, and there's you can fully script things in Lua, uh, which is, I guess, the language or whatever that, they, that the scripting is done in. Um, and people have made scenarios that are just as complex as the ones that come with the game. You can have events trigger that can change, um, you know, the outcome of what's going on. You can have units that are not hostile turn to hostile. You can fully script these campaigns out so that all of these different variables and actions in the game that occur can affect uh, 
what happens later. So um, it's a pretty pretty well built out engine, and it's also or, or editor, and it's also really intuitive for for what it is. Uh, and I I do want I do want to say one thing. Uh, the the quick battle generator is freaking brilliant. This is a new feature that is with CMO. And um, the ability to just really quickly say, like, hey, I want to do a simple dogfight, six aircraft versus six aircraft, F-22s versus pack FAs or whatever. And the ability to just instantly generate that might actually be one of the best ways to learn the game is just do a couple of those because they're small, they're compact, and they're easy to manage. And yet they, they show off a lot of the complexity and, and the kind of basics that... Uh, that you need to understand to play the game well. So I, I think the quick battles, at least the dogfights specifically, uh, I think are, are really a solid piece, in addition to the game. So the game is 80 bucks. So who would you recommend this for? I mean, is it for, do you feel like everybody should, you know, get a taste of this game and try it out? Or is it for like a particular niche type of gamer? Um, I don't know. I mean, basically the people who like this kind of thing are probably going to be very interesting. I don't think there's anything like this on the market, really. Um, you, so you would say, like, people that like Armored Brigade mm, or, like, Crusader Kings, do you feel no. like... I would say, I mean, so if you like... There's definitely an audience to this, because every time there's a sale, you will see somehow it pops into, like, the top 20 sellers on Steam at that time. This is a very... Oh, wow. the, the previous version of the game, based off of all anecdotal evidence, I have no real evidence or information. But based off anecdotal evidence, it's it was very well, very successful. I remember I think when it first went on Steam, it was a top ten Steam seller for like a week. Um, so I mean, it it was very well regarded. That being said, it is definitely not a game for everybody. I would say if you're someone who played the original Harpoon back in the day, obviously a game that that you probably would be interested in because this is very much in many ways the spiritual successor. I would say if you're someone who used to be into microprose or Really, if you're into simulations, complex simulations, it's probably a game worth checking out. Uh, this is more of a simulation, in all honesty, than a game. This is kind of like, um, for people who, to move it into like the simulation, to make that analogy more clear, it's like people might want to play War Thunder or whatever, and this is more the game for people who like DCS and IL-2, those kind of more hardcore simulators. Or, or if you, you know, some people may like Cold Waters, which is a little bit arcadey. It actually models, models things really well. But for those of you who are hardcore and wanted something like Dangerous Waters or uh, 688 Attack Sub, I mean, those, like, the more hardcore, full simulator, full realism type things, the uh, <laughs> it's going to appeal to those kind of people, more hardcore. And the learning curve from what I can see you know, because when I started playing the game, just to move units, you know, I like you guys mentioned, I have to plot course and stuff like that. But when I was going over the entire UI, I, I'll be honest, I got a little bit overwhelmed because when you select a unit or a, an item, like there is a massive amount of options. Like you can if I select a unit. There's so many things that you can change out the loadouts, the weapons go into like an air base. You can change all uh, the uh, vehicles that I have. I mean, just just a lot of stuff. So each unit, there can be an entire like column of options that you can alter. And I that's why when I was playing, I was like, this is definitely not for the faint of heart. This the learning curve I feel for something like this would probably take a lot more time than a traditional strategy game. Well, how much time were you able to put into it, uh, Sean? Not long. So probably about a half hour to maybe an hour. Yeah, so I think um, there's, I don't know if you tried any of the tutorials. So they have um, some tutorials. I was a little nervous about, I, so I like to learn how to play a game down to like the, the mechanics, down to like the, ideally the, even the code. <laughs> I want to know everything about a game when I'm playing it. So I always start with tutorials. They have some tutorials in the game, which really are good for both air combat and for submarine warfare. Um, I think actually once you play those two, you probably have a fix on how to also do surface um, fleet stuff. And uh, this, I would say that this game is intimidating because when you enter it, it is it is hardcore, and there's a lot of options available. But um, the actual gameplay cycle of what you're doing at any given moment is pretty simple. It's mostly, you know, you hit F2, I think it is, to just bring up your you're like um, for your altitude that you're at or your speed, and then you uh, 
bring up F1 to actually target somebody. And, and then you just adjust courses. Those are the three things I do. Like maybe you almost play entire scenarios just using those three things. So I don't think it's too difficult. THG actually knows a little bit more about the game because I learned from him that you can select a whole bunch of objects and hit G to make them a group. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I mean, I think, honestly, it, it might be intimidating up front, but it is the kind of game that I think is, is relatively intuitive with the controls that they have provided as much as a game like this can be. Let me just finish one thing. I, I wanted to say that I think the reason why it's a little intimidating is just because it's not, it does not look like your average war game. Uh, the GUI is completely different. It, it looks a lot more like command ops or like, you know, it does not look like, you know, your resource resources are at the top of the screen, your mini maps. Are, so I think that's a little intimidating, but it, I think it's just, you have to get by that. There's a little discomfort when you first deal with the, the new user interface. Yeah, that, that's the key I would say is that the user interface doesn't rely on traditional RTS uh, conventions. So there's there's a little bit of, of learning there because it is a different uh, base of controls. They did add the right click and then drag to move around the map uh, with this version of the game. So that was a nice addition that is a little bit more in keeping with some other games out there. But there's, you know, it, it's incredibly complex if you want it to be. And it's also simple at other times. And so depending on the complexity of the scenario you're in, Things can be relatively easy or they can be relatively uh, challenging. So uh, in one of my scenarios that I was playing the other day, I was playing a scenario where the U.S., actually it was South Korea, was bombing targets in North Korea. That was relatively easy because we had Gen 4 plus fighters and and aircraft and equipment going up against Gen 2, Gen 3 uh, North Korean equipment that was just horribly outclassed. And so, you know, all I literally had to do was click on a ship of mine, or actually it was a task force. I just, you know, left clicked on it. Then I went up ahead and I hit auto attack because there's 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 options along the top of the screen. In addition to some drop downs, there's actually just some quick quick buttons like auto attack or manual attack or whatever. And I clicked manual attack, clicked the target I wanted to destroy. I just clicked how many units I wanted to actually participate, and then I hit allocate, and as soon as I unpaused, cruise missiles were on the way. So I mean, it can be pretty simple like that or even simpler where you know, I had a group of fighters that was coming in on a tar- that was that was flying around. I just right clicked, dragged over all the units so it highlighted them all. Hit auto attack, selected the target I wanted them to attack, and they managed everything else. I didn't allocate Hydra rockets or uh, Mark eighty two b- bombs or anything like that. The the airplanes just said, "Okay, you gave me an order to attack this target. I'm going to fly there and I'm going to do it by myself without you getting involved." So. There is an ability to micromanage, like, I need to plot my unit around these SAM batteries, but there's also an ability to just kind of watch the game play out and play itself, uh, depending on how involved you want to get. Now, some scenarios where the enemy's much more advanced and they've got better technology than you, you may be better served to be a little bit more micro-y, uh, but it's a little bit different on every, every scenario, every adversary. Um, and yes, the user interface can be something that's a little bit difficult if you're not used to it, to getting to learn. Honestly, the best thing that I would recommend for anyone who's interested in the game but isn't sure if they want to drop 80 bucks on it, go watch some YouTube videos. And I'm not trying to promote myself. I'm not the best command YouTuber out there. Um, Tortuga is a lot better than I am. Stoic uh, Frog uh, Gaming is really good. Kushin. Kushin uh, is, is good. I think he's in the beta um, with the actual developers. Um, I'd say Belugan, but he works for them now, so he doesn't actually, <laughs> he doesn't actually make videos anymore. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a wealth of videos out there. If you just watch some people playing because there's so many drop downs and there's so many options to select, you can learn pretty quick from watching people play because most people aren't using a ton of hotkeys. Most people are using the buttons that you see in the, in the game. So you can kind of see what they're doing and and why they're doing. Yeah. I, I think this is obviously it's always good advice. If you're not sure how to play, just watch someone else play. Uh, and there's, a lot of tutorial videos for Simano. I think a lot of those will also be redone for Command. Um, yeah, it's it's. An, I think that the game is a little bit intimidating because of its look. It it looks militaristic. It looks like <laughs> hardcore. It is hardcore, but it, you know, once you get beyond that, it's really a discomfort thing. Uh, it's not gonna be for everyone, but. Man, I, I've had a lot of fun playing it again because <laughs> I, I wasn't playing Simano for a long time. Just other stuff comes along. But uh, it's one of those things that once you get beyond the initial curve, it's it's very satisfying. And I think the game can also just be an encyclopedia, man, <laughs> if you just want to look up 
<laughs> you just get into the game. You, I, I've had it before where I want to look up all the different units I'm playing around with, and I'll end up not even unpausing my turn because I spend time. They have such detailed information about everything. I spend like an hour just looking at all, like awing over all the different tools in my arsenal, you know, learning, oh my god, this one has a pair of 5,000 pound bombs? That's amazing, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually, I've had a couple of people comment on my videos where they're like, 80 bucks for a computer game? That's so much money. And then instantly someone will jump in and they'll be like, you realize that the database alone is worth more than $80. Even without the game, the database of units, you would pay like $200 to get all of the stuff through like Jane's or some other defense agency oh, or wow. whatnot. Uh, to to provide it to you in that kind of a fashion at that level of quality. And, you know, obviously not everybody really cares, right? Not everybody wants one of those encyclopedias. But it's worth mentioning that the database is gigantic and you can easily get lost in there and uh, never find your way back out until you're an emaciated shell. (laughs) Well, so you guys are both on board for, you guys both recommend this game. 